And we know that um, many of our fine institutions were more uh, categorised by egos driving what took place internally uh, than purpose taking place. And what we're trying to do around organisations today is make the uh, ego the servant of purpose, not your purpose the servant of your ego. Uh, there was a, a guy who was in fact a, a managing partner of a law firm when I was working with them who said to me, which I thought was really astute at the time, I still think it's astute, he said, it's amazing what you can achieve if you don't mind who gets the credit. And the whole point about purpose is what is the purpose we're trying to achieve here? And if it's about I'm smarter than you, then that's not going to be in a very effective strategy going through. What we're looking at at the moment is uh, repairing the, the reputations um, and the standing of, uh, of corporations and institutions. Uh, those who used to be in charge are not necessarily the people who are considered to be the people acting in the collective best interest. So uh, with the global financial crisis, uh, when the corporate leaders were taking ma major bonuses while they were laying off large numbers of people and major bonuses while organisations were going bankrupt, it was seen that they were more self-serving than rather uh, serving in the collective interest. So that's been a, a big shift. Um, the other big shift, so trust is, is one big thing and, and that'll be important there. Uh, the, the other big thing that's coming through is the rise of purpose and I'll talk to you a bit about this. So why do we do what we do? Uh, what is the difference we seek to make? Why do we exist? Uh, and I have lots of companies have the discussion uh, which is about would it make any difference to our clients if we didn't exist? Is there anything distinctive and different that we provide that's of value to our clients that the industry and they would be worse off for not having? The last little bit in terms of what's going on in the world, so if it's about trust, if it's about purpose, the other thing is about volatility. So they say in terms of leadership today, we're working in a what's called a VUCA world, the UCA. It's one that's volatile, comes from anywhere, comes from left field changes happening. The U is uncertain. No one has absolute certainty about what customers or clients are going to want. Uh, complex, multiple stakeholders. Uh, so government stakeholders, community stakeholders, your own people are major stakeholders. And then we'll have a lot of talk about generational changes. You know, my generation, we're happy to get a job. Uh, more about security within that job, which drives a certain type of behaviour in the culture. Uh, but, and the A is ambiguous. So ambiguous is things today are neither black nor white. Uh, so that in many, there are some things that are black and white. Obviously there are things that are unethical. But many of the things now are in one industry people, or one market, people could be your competitors and another one, they're going to be your collaborators. But what became really important for us in terms of culture, which has an impact on what we're talking about around leadership, is that if you want to start thinking about designing a culture that's going to suit our strategy, if you don't design it, it'll just happen by default. So if you just let a bunch of people turn up in the office and do stuff, they will develop their own culture and it may not be the one you want. So we begin to design a culture and if you're going to do that then you need leaders who have emotional intelligence, who are actually able to understand people. And I think the first of these presentations I did for LPMA I seem to recall somewhere along the line was about what is emotional intelligence and why does it matter and all that. So this became really important, a guy called Daniel Goleman said listen, being smart, having a great IQ is not going to make you more, uh, more competitive than someone else. His proposition was, in any profession or any job, there is a threshold of IQ or smarts you need. After that, the ones who differentiate are the ones who have emotional intelligence. Now, why is this important? Well, if you want to build trust, follow through, keep your promises, keep your commitment, because the level of trust will determine the level of openness in a team. From the human psychology point of view, we will never in a relationship be more open than the level of trust that's established. If I'm not certain that I can trust you, I will be more circumspect in what I tell you. Uh, you can normally tell in any team or group how much trust there is by what people discuss. If I'm prepared to talk about the problems, the challenges, the issues, the frustrations, the things that are not working, 
then we've got pretty high levels of psychological trust in the place. So increasingly what we need to do if we're not trying to just get compliance, which is just do what you're told, because we know those old organisations just got compliance, you know, got about half of human potential what they were capable of. The level of openness then will determine the level of knowledge sharing that occurs. And the level of knowledge sharing that occurs will determine the level of collaboration that you get. So if you want to get people to work across practice groups, well, you better start here and you better start there and leading to there so you get that.